Hey what's up guys, this is 3 Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and this time I want to talk about this beautiful crazy sausage inflation for these tubes. Alright, so I combined it with one of my favorite logos, the Nike logo and you can just see these inflated tubes. I call them inflated sausages because it's just funny and you can see that it is looking beautifully together. Of course you can combine it with other logos, for example with the Chanel logo, but definitely it would be the best when you even do it with your own logo all right so right now I need to design my logo for a 3d bonfire and then I think I will do another version with my own logo but until then yeah just combine it with some of your favorite brands and create something amazing of course you can play with the shaders put some bump some displacement on it some reflective material some metallic material all of the good stuff so this technique is just fun and so powerful and you can see here uh, some other looks so for example here I created these black sausages these inflated tubes and this gives me some matrix vibes for example so also this is quite beautiful with this displacement on it and of course you can also get a transparent material on it and just have fun with it. So I would say we create a simple inflated sausage here on YouTube but just be sure that more of the good stuff as always is on my Patreon. So these are just some of the inflated sausage lessons but of course you will get soft body knowledge, redshift knowledge, octane knowledge, all of the good stuff on my Patreon. So when I mention my Patreon it's this one 3D Bonfire and just subscribe to the Knights tier because this is where all of the good stuff is in. You can see See, I have already 364 patrons so a lot of people trust me already and like my stuff. You will get over I think 150 tutorials maybe even more project files all of the good stuff it's in here all right. If you don't want to become a Patreon, you can still support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel, write a comment, do the good stuff. I always like your comments, so that would be also a great help for the algorithm. This is me on Instagram if you want to see my latest art. And just in case you want to have some free stuff, go to marcusgonzagumroad.com and you could download some free wallpapers, for example. All right, so I think this is almost all of the mandatory stuff. Let's just one last time go into After Effects and see the animation here so you can see this is just crazy and of course right now this is still the software preview so this is not shaded with redshift or octane but you can already see the nice combination with the logo and this sausages and I think here I also have some beautiful still frames so here sausages are not inflated but then you pump in some pressure and air and they will go over the logo and react with it there are proper collisions and it will just look amazing so I would say now let's finally jump into Cinema 4D and have some fun just a little quick tip here if you need some vector files for the Nike logo or some other files I would suggest you go just to your search engine and search for something like sports brand logo and I think I for example use these ones but yeah just search for them and I'm sure you will find something. All right let's fire up our favorite software Cinema 4D and you can see here in the left view this is my render view so it's already a bit slow but you can scrub through it because it's already a cast simulation and you can see the beautiful framing here and maybe I will just quickly fire up redshift so that you can also see it in the rendered view so I have some light coming up from here some beautiful materials I kept it simple without too much reflective stuff in it because I wanted to have it a bit more flat more graphical and overall I really am satisfied with this look but of course if you want to learn more about materials and stuff check out my patreon <laughs> all right so I would say we just go into a new scene so let me just grab this logo I will go over there and just put this one back into my scene for now we can pause the render view and maybe we don't even need a second view here so let's just undock them so we have more space here all right and I think to have some inflated tube or sausage a good thing would be to use a cylinder for example so let's just make the cylinder bigger bigger let's move it behind our logo and for now I will say we just keep it really simple so let's do it like this maybe we could even use a cloner setup so I will hold down alt put the cylinder into the cloner and we only need three of these tubes so let's just do it like this for now as I said I want to keep it simple and use less cubes than in my version just to be faster here on YouTube but of course you can use more of the cylinders and make it more interesting. 
Okay, so let's give it some segments. And just to be sure, again, only for YouTube, I will keep the segments not super high so that we have a faster playback. The scene will be more responsive. But of course, for your final animation, you can put in way more elements, way more polygons, or you could also then just afterwards put the cloner into a subdivision surface to get additional details here. All right, so for now, we keep it like this. And I think we want to pin these sausages down here. All right. Or you know what, we could even make the cylinders a little bit shorter. So let's do it like this, for example. All right. And then I will put a plane down here. Okay. Let's just control drag it and we create another plane over there. Now it is time to pin these cloth cylinders to these planes. And therefore, first we should go to the cloner simulation tag and put the cloth tag on it. Let's just quickly see if this is already moving. All right. So now it is falling down. Down. This is not a good option. So let's press Ctrl D and go to the settings, go to simulation, scene. And I think for now we could just get rid of the gravity completely. Now let's go to these planes here and we right click on them, simulation text, put also a cloth tag on it because these elements, they need to be cloth to be a connector for these cylinders. Sounds pretty complicated, but I will just guide you through it. So right now, these ones are cloth elements and you can see they will just be soft and react like cloth. But this is not exactly what we want. We want it to be red as a cloth object, but then we want to pin it with 100%. So now they are fixed in position and you can see now these planes, they don't move, but now we can go to these planes, simulation tags and put put a connector onto it. Let's duplicate the connector onto the other plane. And now let's just zoom in a little bit, select both of the connectors. Let's put this one maybe to 10 and then say create connections. So we can see some connections here. I was thinking we would see a bit more. So maybe we just move them slightly beneath it, something like that. Let's select the connector one more time and let's just see these connections. Maybe we put it to 20 and let's put this one to 10. It doesn't really matter. So let's just see with 20. All right, it doesn't change so much. This is okay. Let me just try it with 30 or let's try it with 50. Okay, so this seems to be a good value to just pin these ones in position. And now when we, for example, make our simulation just a bit more interesting with the turbulence, put this one to 50 and maybe with a strength of 20, then hopefully the cylinders, they will move around. Okay. Yes, and they move around, but it looks like they are not pinned to the bottom element here. So let me just try this one more time. Let's go to the strength of the turbulence, make it really strong. I just want to have a bit more movement in it. And let's just see what is happening here. All right, I played a little bit with the settings here, and I think it's totally natural that they just move a little bit. They try to get away, but the connection, it will hold it back. All right, so I think it's okay that it will move a little bit bit here. That's just natural. Okay. And let's just check it up here. And you can also see it just moves a little bit, but overall it is pinned to the plane. And this is a good thing. So we have these three tubes in position. I like it. And now I think we could just go to them and give them more subdivisions. So put it to 230 or 40 just to put more resolution into the scene. Now you can see we have a lot of subdivisions. So and a to go out of the lines mode. Now you can see we have these little artifacts. This is just because of the font text. So let's put this one to 180. And already you can see we have these beautiful inflated tubes here. From now on, I will not call it sausage because maybe some of you will get annoyed by it. But overall, you can see they dance around and it's beautiful. Now I would say we can still go into the balloon tag. Let's go into it and let's put this one maybe to three. All right. Okay. And this was too much. Let's put it to 1.5. Let's do it like this. All right. So I think it is cool. Maybe I want to just play a little bit with the settings. Let's just see what happens when we put bendiness and stretchiness to 100 and 100 and only a little bit of 
ballooning and maybe we want to animate up the target length. This will always look beautiful. So I will go to frame zero. Let's get to frame 18, for example. Let's put this one to 120. And now most probably this will be totally crazy. All right, so you get a lot of cloth here and now it is pretty hectic. You can therefore go to the turbulence and let's say the strength is only 50, but the scale is 120 of the normal noise of the turbulence field. Let's just see this one more time. All right, it's really crazy. What we totally forget is to put the collider on our logo. So NB, you can see the lines here, and this is not a good collider. Therefore, I will just duplicate this one, make the first one invisible, put this one into a builder, then put it into a mesher, and then put it into a remesher. And now you will have some collider with a better geometry. Go into the builder and let's put a delete and erode on it just to make it a bit bigger. Let's put this one maybe to two. Let's put the voxel size to five to just get a bit more resolution here. This is looking good. And then we go to the remesher and put the remeshing only to 30%, for example. And I would say now you will have a beautiful remeshed collider here. Let's move it out of the null. Let's click on it. Let's go to a simulation text one more time and put a collider on it. And now we could just hold down Alt G to put this collider into a null, put the logo also into it. Now let's make the logo visible and collider invisible. And then we could, for example, just see how close we are to our object. I think we can go closer here. And then you could still just animate this one, for example, in the first second, just a bit back. So you will have more of collisions here and then Hopefully you will have something cool here. All right, maybe one thing I forgot to mention. I think when you have a collider object like this one, you shouldn't put it into a null and move it with the null because somehow then the collisions will not be detected. I think it's better to have the keyframes directly on your collider object. So you can see it here when I press NA to get rid of the lines. And now when I move this one back, then you can see that the cloth object will be pushed away. And I think we can make this even a bit more interesting by putting an attractor in front of our logo, for example. So now I think the cloth will be attracted by this attractor. Let's just reduce the influence of this attractor by putting a box on it, for example. All right, so I just reworked the setup here. So you can see, and this is my attractor. It's in front of our logo and I use a sphere here. And I think when you go into the attractor, for example, I use it with a strength of 40 and then go into the fields. There I will use a spherical field and then I inverted the spherical field. So I think that means that overall, everywhere in the scene, the movement towards the spherical field is the power of 40, but then inside of this fall of radius, it slowly decreases to zero. So this will prevent you from a black hole effect when the cloth will be sucked into an infinite small point and you will get an ugly unwanted effect. So right now, you can see here the sausage, I'm sorry, the tube or the cylinder, however you want to call it, tries to go to the effector, to the attractor. And without it, I think you will have some collision here. But overall, the cylinder doesn't really care about going closer to this point. And why do I do this with the attractor? I just want to have the glider interact more with our logo and this will just make it a bit more interesting. So for now, let's make this one invisible. Let's activate all of the tubes again and let's just see the simulation with three cylinders. Be sure when you have a cloner setup to put the cloth tag onto the cloner. And now I just want to see how this is looking. Okay, it's kind of cool. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is a good start. Let me just quickly cache this one. So I will just go to my t-shirt tag here, go to cache and I will cache it for four seconds, for example. And let's click on the button, wait like a minute and let's just see how it will look. All right, the cache took like 20 or 30 seconds. And now you can see with the subdivision surface, this will look ultra smooth, but without it, it's also beautiful. You can see we have some nice movement in our scene. These tubes, they just move gently around our logo. And because of the attraction, you will get this forward movement here, but some of it will be held back by the logo. So you get beautiful collisions here. And overall, you already have an amazing animation. All 
right? Let's just pause it here, activate the subdivision surface. Now you put some beautiful light in it, maybe make more of these inflated sausages, create some materials and all of the good stuff. And as you already know, you will learn more of it on my Patreon. So I will share my light setup. Maybe I will talk a little bit more in depth about the scene. Maybe you even want to know how to make this additional detail here with the golden string go around it. And then just look at what beautiful effect you can get here. I mean, this is this is just next level stuff here. And it's so amazing that you can do this with Cinema 4D and just create awesome artworks. All right, just look at the beautiful folds, the wrinkles, and it's just so much fun. So I hope you learned something useful here. Thanks for your time. It was amazing to share this with you. Please write a comment if you liked it. And overall, just have an amazing day and be powerful and prolific. Bye, everyone.